Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. Three's Company starred physical comedy champion John Ritter in his breakout role as Jack Tripper, who is a culinary student who crashes a party and wakes up in Janet Wood and Chrissy Snow's bathtub. Janet, Chrissy, and Jack end up becoming roommates, with Jack posing as a gay man in order to keep the co-ed living situation going. It chronicles the escapades and the hijinks of the trio's constant misunderstandings, social lives, and financial struggles. The series was recorded at two different locations. The first, seventh, and eighth season were taped at Metro Media Square and ABC Television Center, while the second through the sixth seasons were taped at Studio 31 at CBS Television City. The cast would receive their script on Monday, rehearse from Tuesday to Thursday, and then they would shoot on Friday. Each episode of the show was shot two consecutive times, using different audiences for each one, using three multi-camera setup. The taping of the show was done in sequence, and there were rarely any retakes because the producers were really strict on the series. They were known to be very controlling on the most minute details of the show. The scenes in the opening credits of the trio frolicking on a boardwalk and riding bumper cars was shot at the Santa Monica Pier. The producers shot a new opening sequence when Priscilla Barnes joined the show, featuring the new threesome and the other cast members and observing various animals around the park. These sequences were filmed at the Los Angeles Zoo in Griffith Park. During this sequence, a baby boy in overalls who approaches Janet while feeding the goats at the zoo was portrayed by Jason Ritter, John Ritter's oldest son. The exterior shots of the building were filmed at 2912 4th Street in Santa Monica. The production had many cast changes over its run. The first of these changes took place in the spring of 1979 with the relocation of the Ropers to their own television series, which revolved around Helen and Stanley and their neighbors in a townhouse community after Stanley had sold the apartment building. Two changes took place in the fall of 1979 at the beginning of the fourth season. The first was the addition of Lana, an older woman who chased Jack. She kept pursuing him, but he was unappreciative of her advances. Since Ann Wedgworth disliked her diminishing role in the series, producers dropped Lana from the show with no explanation before it reached mid-season. The other new addition that fall was the new building manager, Ralph Furley, played by Don Knotts. His brother Bart bought the building from the Ropers. Mr. Furley pursued Lana unsuccessfully, as she unsuccessfully pursued Jack. Unlike Lana, Mr. Furley remained until the end of the series. Season 5 marked the beginning of contract renegotiations that sparked friction on the set. Suzanne Summers demanded a substantial increase in salary, from $30,000 to $150,000 per episode, plus 10% of the show's profits. When her demands were not met, she went on strike of sorts. The executives believed that a complete loss of Summers would damage the program's popularity, so a compromise was reached. Summers, who was still under contract, continued to appear in the series, but only in one minute closing tag scenes for a handful of episodes. Her scenes were taped on completely separate days from the show's regular taping, and she wasn't there at the same time that any of the cast members were shooting their scenes. According to the story within the show, 
her character had returned to her hometown of Fresno to care for her ailing mother and was only seen when she telephoned her former roommates and they recounted that week's adventure to her. This arrangement continued for one entire season. Summer's contract was not renewed by the studio and Chrissy's place in the apartment was taken by her clumsy cousin, Cindy Snow. Billy Crystal auditioned to play Jack Tripper, but he ended up losing out the role to John Ritter. Lonnie Anderson auditioned for the role of Chrissy, and she didn't get the part either. She later went on to be on WKRP in Cincinnati. John Ritter felt that she did a great audition, and he theorized that the reason she wasn't selected was the fact that no one would believe that she wasn't capable of living in her own apartment. While they desperately were searching for the right Chrissy the day before production began, studio heads put all the audition tapes that they had received and fast-forwarded through them in hopes of finding the right girl. When they spotted Summers, they stopped the tape, and they liked what they saw. At the time, they couldn't figure out why they had passed on her in the first place. Summers was then summoned to the studio. They got her in that day, tested her again, and realized that she was terrific for the part, and filming started the very next day. This was an entire accident, because she would have never gotten the part had they not fast-forwarded through those tapes. Norman Fell based his character of Stanley Roper on a real person. It was a man he knew back in his hometown of Philadelphia. He was innocent and a guy who just can't do things right, whether it's being with a woman or fixing something. And yet he really thought in his own mind that he was the cat's meow. He thought he was attractive, he liked his clothes, and he thought people were looking at him because of how well-preserved he looked. He thought he was all things that he really wasn't. Now, Joyce DeWitt was terribly self-conscious about her legs and refused to show her legs on camera unless she had pantyhose on. The wearing of these pantyhose while they were filming drew an enormous amount of attention to her legs. Because of this, she went on to do numerous commercials for legs pantyhose and basically became famous because of something that she was uncomfortable about showing on TV. Go back and look at an episode of this great sitcom from the 70s. It'll bring back a lot of memories from that time. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.